So as it would happen, every other comment I seem to get is asking about my Land Cruiser's suspension setup. So to get some internet points, this is a video about that. Now firstly, I have been rather absent on social media lately, which means that I've been annoying a lot of people by not replying to their messages. And there is a reason for this. I have been trying to learn how to make websites. So you should try this website. And yes, it's probably comparable to a horrendous generic YouTuber's online shop. With a twist. I don't sell stickers and t-shirts and other overpriced marked up nonsense. I actually sell real things that have a use in this world. So if you have spare money, check it out and buy stuff. And I'll be adding more stuff later. So apologies to some people who I've ignored on social media. For example... Oh yeah, look at my sexy wife, VB. I just bought her a cup holder. Cup holders don't need cup holders. So with formalities out of the way, it's time to talk about stuff. And this stuff involves finding out why my car flexes relatively well for a Land Cruiser. Because in case you didn't know, they're not very renowned for it. And mine has the advantage of being relatively legal at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the front and work my way back and tell you exactly what I've done to it to, to get it into the semi-flexible state that it's in right now. And this means that my hard work and trial and error over the last couple of years can be copied by all you sheep trying to save time and effort. So to get the best idea of what I've done to the front, I'm going to take the front wheels off. So I guess the first thing to talk about is the lift that I've got on this car. This is a two inch old man emu. I've got the medium springs and the two inch shocks. But this is where the changes come in that make all the difference. Starting with the bump stops. So your bump stops have these little ridges here. And what I've done is I've chopped off the one at the bottom, making my bump stops about one inch shorter than they should be. Now coupled with that, I've done a fair bit of stuff up here. Now the first thing that you can't really notice is that I've chopped this top bush in half. Now I'm well aware that this means that it's going to wear out about twice as fast. But I've got two now, so that doesn't really matter. The next thing is I've spaced my shocks down. Now this is useful because it gives me more extended length. And it also means that I'm taking advantage of that wasted space on the up travel when the car's bottomed out on the bump stops and there's still a lot of travel left in the shocks. So what this means is that I'm maximizing the up and down travel, which means that it'll tuck right up to the shortened bump stops and it'll also droop right down without letting the springs go completely loose. This is obviously the same on both sides. Now the next thing I've modified are the radius arms. Now these are the two inch lift caster corrected bushes. And with those, I've probably lost about a fraction of a degree of articulation, which is made up for in the next bush that I changed. What I've then done is changed this solid bush back here, and this allows the arm to move wherever it wants on full compression or droop. Now this is where the disagreements are going to happen. If you've gone and bought aftermarket radius arms, I'm afraid to tell you, you've probably wasted your money without gaining anything. And here's why. You take these ones for example. The company goes through great measures to tell you that they're not going to sell you these bushes separately, and they'll only provide you with replacements if you can prove that you brought these arms from them in the first place. Simply because the only difference are the bushes. The only thing you're ever going to gain is that fraction of a degree because these are designed while catering for that caster correction. But the gains are literally minimal. Now the only ones that will give you true gains are these style. And that's just because they have more bushes, more squishy things, 
and they're able to move a bit better. But then whatever happens next, you've still got the next limiting factor, which is either your springs falling out or your shocks getting to full extension. So chances are you'll have no advantage whatsoever unless you space your shocks down and get longer springs. And that's about it for the front. Congratulations, you've made it this far. Now it's time for more of me telling you how bad things are from the box when you buy very expensive suspension items. Starting with heavy duty parabolic leaf springs. From the box, they are awful. Here's why. Now when you buy these leaf springs, they are massively overrated for what they are. They're rated from 300 to 700 kilos. And that's because of this ridiculously excessive overkill spring that goes on the bottom of it. In case you hadn't noticed, I took mine off. Now the reason for this, what you might have seen in one of my other videos, is what I believe to be an engineering overcompensation. The light duty versions of these springs used to be rated from 300 to 500 kilos. And what I assume happened were a lot of complaints about sagging. So what they've done is they've reclassified those original springs from what I believe is 0 to 300 kilos and simply added a third spring to the leaf pack. And the result is a ridiculously oversprung leaf pack, which is why I took the bottom one off. What I found was that any time I was loaded up, the lowermost spring was doing nothing, and when I needed the spring to articulate, it was restricting the whole leaf pack and not allowing my wheel to travel upwards. So take it off, throw it away, and make another leaf retainer like this one. The only negative worth mentioning is a very, very slight case of spring wrap under heavy acceleration. But this is only relevant when I'm trying to impress my friends in Bunnings car parks. If you don't have a tune, it won't be noticeable at all. Next on the list, U-bolt plates. Now one of the biggest criticisms of the 70 series Land Cruiser are the fact that the spring hangers keep catching on every single thing you try and go across. So I fitted these U-bolt plates, and what they do is they give you about an extra inch and a half of ground clearance, and they also raise your rear shock up a similar amount. And this also helps improve what we talked about in the front. And what it also means is that the diff pumpkin is now the lowest part of the car. And if you look at something like a Ford Ranger or other horrendously ridiculous leaf sprung utes, you'll find that this is now much more capable and much more streamlined than even they are. And the last thing we're gonna talk about are these. Now I'm sure these will bring their own controversy to the table, but I'll let their capabilities speak for themselves. Now I've just realized that I might not have made enough content for this video to be over 10 minutes, which is apparently the magic number required for the YouTube algorithm. So I've decided to pad out this content with things I've been building. You might notice an abundance of rooftop tent, but a lack of a car. Here's why. I've come to the conclusion that having a permanently mounted rooftop tent is not a very good idea. Mainly because it means I can't get into shopping malls, which is the only place people drive their 70 series Land Cruisers. So I've made this. this is that I wanted to be able to put on and remove my rooftop tent in under five minutes. And this solves half the problem. So let's see it in action.
goes in there. I can't do it with one hand. So with that revelation and eight clips, I can put on and take off my rooftop tent in about a minute and a half. Now I've added some tracks in the middle of the roof rack to keep the tent aligned, which means that the clips themselves are only holding it downwards onto the rack, which means that they're plenty strong enough before you start fighting me in the comments. And if they're not, there'll be another video about tents falling off roofs in the near future. That is all. <laughs>